working on a way to mount this rotisserie back up to the airplane here, the airframe, so I can turn, turn. Hey, cat, what are you doing? All right, come here. Working on a, a way to hook this rotisserie back up to the fuselage so I can use it to rotate it to fit up the windshield. And this is what I've come up with so far. Got some, I guess that's eighth inch thick, fairly thick wall, one inch square tubing. And I cut off uh, four pieces of that, each one of them four inches long. And then I had some strapping that came that was uh, part of the stuff that was on those old bleachers that we salvaged out of the high school that we saved. I've used that, uh, pieces off of that. That's where this tubing came from for the rotisserie and a bunch of other parts that I've made up have come from that. That This is part of that. This was just some strap, a one inch wide strap. And that looks like it's almost a quarter inch. Well, anyway, I cut off some two inch pieces of that and then welded onto this square tubing and okay you can get down so I let that stick out an inch an inch of it is welded on here then I drilled it with a 3 8 inch drill bit which is the hole for a, a number six AN6 bolt which is what is uh, mounts these up to or I've got three of them mounted up here now to this firewall dug out some old AN6 bolts there to attach those to it with just to hold them on there while I get this figured out. And now what I've got to do is figure out some way to mount this framework that I made up for this rotisserie to this uh, to these lugs that I just made. Uh, I've got to figure that out. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. Well this is what I'm making so far. This is the piece that's going to mount onto the fuselage bracket that the engine mount mounts to. This piece goes in against on the bracket itself and then this piece end sticks out. I'm trying to figure out a way to get this end to mount up to that rotisserie that I'd made. I was thinking about taking that those tubes that I had made earlier that uh, mounted to the fuselage, cutting them off, sticking them inside this box tubing here and welding them in but the OD on those tubes is quite a bit smaller than the ID on this tubing here and it was a pretty good gap around there, it would take a heck of a weld to do that I wanted something to fill it in, looking maybe for some rectangular steel or something to drive in there and weld in and then drill it and tap it for a bolt I don't really have anything here that I could use without a whole lot of filing and stuff like that well, I got to looking through what I do have and I've got this round shafting here the ID on this is uh, about seven six, a little over three quarters of an inch. And this shafting that I've got is it's seven eight, seven nine, so it's a little bit bigger diameter. So I'm going to turn that down to fit inside this tube and uh, drill it, tap it for a three eighths inch bolt. I think I'll go a, a coarse a three eighths sixteen. But anyway, I'm going to uh, have to turn that down to fit over inside there, and then I'll weld it in there. Well, I'll do that here on the lathe. That's one of the reasons I bought this lathe in the first place, is so I could do things like this. Now, this piece of shafting has been beat up on the ends. I've used it for a drift for different things, probably driving the pins out of tracks of my excavator or something. I don't know what all I've used it for, but anyway, it's been it's all mushroomed out here on both ends so the first thing I'm going to do is true those ends up I've got to do both ends because this is going to wind up sticking out of there a ways right now it's in past the chuck so the mushroomed end is inside the headstock of the lathe inside the spindle but eventually it's going to come out where it might interfere with the lathe so I'm going to go ahead and turn this end down true it up swing it around do the other, same thing to the other end and then we'll take this down to size I'll go ahead and drill it here and then I'll cut these off into about half inch sections. I'll try to do that into just a light press fit into that uh, box tube, but it doesn't really matter because it'll be welded in there anyway. Good enough. 
enough for that end. Well, I'm going to swap ends anyway. Do the same thing on the other end. That way I make sure I've got a good, nice end on this if I want to use it for something else again. Okay, now if I'm going to do this um, half inch, and I need four of them. I need at least uh, two inches out, so I'm going to stick that out a little bit farther than that and make sure I have plenty. I want to go about two inches, so that'll do me right there. More than do me right there. Okay. Use just a little bit more. Okay, now I know I said I wanted a light press fit on there, but this is a, a slip fit and that'll be just fine. That'll work just fine. Well, I'm going to turn this down, speed down to the slowest speed, and I've got to drill that out pretty deep. I'm going to go two inches. I've got a bit in there for a pilot hole, and I've got my tail spindle is set for an inch and a half depth. We'll go ahead and start cutting. There's two and a half inches. That's as deep as my tailstock spindle will go. Yeah, I'm going to drill for the clearance hole for the threads. My stirrup chart up there in the wall calls for a 5 16 drill bit, but I'm going to go just a little bit bigger. 3 8 24 calls for a letter Q. This is a P, so it's smaller diameter than for the 3 8 24, but it's a little bigger than what's called for for the 3 8 16, which will be fine for this. This is just a temporary thing and I want it to tap easy. inch already. Boy, that drill bit is sharp. Of course, the hole is already close to that size, but that drill bit's just melting in there. There's the, the bit. That thing is really nice and sharp. That just melted right in there. This is the bit set, the Norseman uh, drill and tool magnum, super premium bits made in the USA, number or uh, letter drill bit set. I'm going to uh, put this back in the chuck a little ways and set it up for cutting it off. Well, here we go. Okay, now I'm going to put all of those, chuck all of those back up and chamfer those holes. Okay, those are all deburred, the holes are chamfered make an easier start for the dot or the tap. I'm not going to thread these yet. I'm not going to run a tap in these yet because they're, I'm going to weld them into those fittings and when I weld them in these holes will get distorted so when I get done welding them in then I'll run a bit either a reamer or something down through those holes to make sure they're square and clean and then I'll run the tap down through each one of them. All right, there's my four nuts, and they're not anywhere close to being the same size, but it doesn't matter. Actually, those two are pretty close, but it doesn't matter. They're good enough for who they're for. I wanted these little plugs, uh, just the diameter so that they would just press fit down in there so that I could take the hammer or vise or whatever and press them down in to where they were flush and they would hold inside of this tube but I got them just a little bit too small 
and they just slide in there they'll, they'll drop down through it's just not quite enough to friction hold them in there what I did is I took a punch and just uh, made a mark in the, each one of these just right on the edge so that it uh, swedged this edge in just a little bit that closed this gap up just enough so that that will just slide down in there and hold so that's just a perfect fit there now that's just right I've got it set up and I'll take my wire feed welder and go ahead and weld that thing in there this is a Century 130 wire feed and I've got 30 thousandths flux core wire in there Alright, that's going to work. I'll take this over to the grinder or the, belt, the disc sander and sand this down so it's flush and then I'll run uh, just a clearance drill bit down through there and I'll tap that hole out for the 3 8 16 and we should be good to go. Um, I'll finish up those other four like the, or the other three the same way. And, uh, I took these over to the disc sander and radiused off these ends here on these tabs and then flattened out this end here where the bolts gonna go where that that I just welded in there so those look a lot better now just setting up on the drill press here so I can just uh, clean those holes out and just make sure they're all okay Alright, that worked. Worked pretty good. We got this uh, mounted up to the brackets on there. The little standoff things that I made. It did run into a little bit of a uh, defugalty. I uh, measured these out through and I decided that two inch bolts were just a little bit too short. They would work but I didn't think they had enough uh, bolts sticking out here for full nut contact on them. So I figured I'd get two and a quarter inch bolts. Well, a hardware store only had two and a half inch bolts. They only had two inch and two and a half inch. So I went ahead with uh, two and a half inch bolts. And they're a little bit long. I wound up digging out some washers and sticking some washers on there to, so I could squeeze these together. They're still not exactly tight. That quarter inch steel there doesn't want to squeeze very good. But I think I got them on there and squeezed on pretty good. My little plugs that I made in there were just perfect. I got some one inch bolts to stick in there and I just got hardware store bolts for everything. Uh, I decided not to use uh, expensive AN bolts for this so I just got 3 8 16 bolts and I got fiber lock nuts for these main ones here so they don't come loose. So the next step will be to pick the tail up and stick it on something and see if I can figure out what I did with all the attached stuff for the uh, tail portion of the rotisserie. Well as the great philosopher and wordsmith Yogi Berra once said, it's deja vu all over again. I didn't think I was going to see this thing on that rotisserie again but after bringing it down here and thinking about it a very short time I realized that that's what the best thing to do to fit that windshield and that cowling on there was so I've got that fitted back up in there now ready to start working on it I wait for the cabin heat valve to get here a mechanic should have sent it to me it should be on its way so once it gets here I can get it installed and I think everything else in there inside the cabin area is all finished. I'll have to fit the defroster tubes up and make the deflectors for the defroster but we get that all done and that windshield fitted up there and then I can take this off there for the last time and put my stand on there that I built which will be the bogey wheels minus the the little wheels on there and I've got that bar that I made up to sit it on to hold it on so we'll get that on there then and then start trying to figure out how to get the wings attached to it the forecast doesn't look too good here for the next few days now it's supposed to get down around zero or so that'll just going to be too cold in here to work out here in the hangar there's just not enough heat to compensate for that kind of cold out here so probably not going to get much done on this until 
it warms up again a little bit, at least enough that my heaters will start keeping my fingers defrosted while I work on stuff, but we'll see what happens. I'll 